Okay, this video is basically a drawing lesson where I'm going to walk you through my process in sketching St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. So you'll notice I've already penciled in some of the details, but basically what I've done is done some very quick measurements with my eye, just having a look at the reference picture. You can see these areas of the cathedral where you've got these sort of bulbous areas that extend up. Uh, I think they're little towers in the in the cathedral. They basically are at the same height. This one's a little bit taller actually, so it kind of goes up here. And you've got two, one here, um, almost a little bit closer to the one to the left, and then you've got one here, which is a little bit closer to the one to the right. So just make sure that you get in those details first because it's going to make a big difference later when you do your drawing with your pen anyway. So don't want to make one of them too big or too small and you have to try to figure all of that out later on. And this is what I do with the pencil. I basically just try to get in some basic proportions to make it easier later on with the drawing and pen. So I've added in some figures in the front as well. You know, you might want to add some bigger ones, you know, closer to the front like this. It's fine. And it's going to help as well. So I'll just get one here. We'll add in the legs and stuff later on. Maybe we'll add a handbag or something coming down the side like that. Okay. We've got some figures coming across here. Maybe another one. Let's put another one here. Like that. Okay. I think another one, a couple more to this side will be good as well. That will help to balance out the scene. That. Make this a bit taller actually. But. Um, Really, we're just placing shapes on the paper to help guide the pen work afterwards. And, you know, a little bit of detail here, just to get the shape like that. And this one here as well. It almost look uh, like onion shapes. So they're kind of larger, uh, wider at the base and then they taper off there. There's a lot of detail in here. It's quite overwhelming when you look at it to begin with. But what we want to do is just minimize that down and make it as simple as possible. So we've got the tops in. Now the next step is really to get in bottoms of some of these towers and some of the windows and things like that. So you've got this main one in the middle of the cathedral and you notice that there's two sections. There's one section here and that almost ends a little bit higher up actually about here where this, so it's almost like there and you've got some more details beneath and it goes down, finishes around here, almost at the base of this bit of the cathedral. And now just going to add in some details and look underneath as well. They're kind of a square shape. So just draw in a basic square shape. You know, it's a rectangular square shape. And I mean, it's not really, it's there. If you look closer, it's almost circular or there are sides to it could be hexagonal, um, but it's really not a big deal when you're doing a simple sketch like this. Um, you know, if I'm just looking at it and I'm not concentrating too much, it really just looks like a square, but we can get in some of those details later on. So let's just do the same for this one here. And looking again at where it ends, about there. And you've got more kind of details. And then this goes further down the page. 
you know, you've got some windows here, which we'll get in later. That, and you know, a bit of the base there, and you know, it ends with this last section here. So we're just gonna get in some basic details. There's windows there, which I've just indicated. There's actually a statue here as well. So I'm going to indicate that slightly, zoom in to the reference photo and have a quick look. I mean, it's not the main, I guess, uh, thing I want to draw detail uh, attention to, but you know, you do want to get in a little bit of that detail there. So that's a statue. And these figures are probably a bit too big, but you know, we can get them a bit smaller later on. And what we'll do, just again, let's get in the sections there. That. And, you know, more details underneath. Some windows here. You know, you've got some other windows coming across like that and this section here we're going to just add in a bit of that rectangular shape again underneath square shape and you've got a kind of these cascading semicircles so it's really basic don't worry too much just yet okay and you know you've got more shapes near the bottom you've got a couple of these triangular areas of the cathedral that just extend upwards like that and you know a section beneath like that where there's a bit of darkness on underneath so this is basically all you want to do. You, know, you don't even need to do it in pencil, but if you're starting out, this is going to really help you to, I guess, gauge where things are so you're not struggling too much uh, with a building like this. It's difficult. Um, this is one of the most pretty difficult references that you can work off. But if you can handle something like this, uh, you know, a lot of other buildings will be pretty easy for you. So let's give this one a go. And there's actually a, a tree here. And you know, we can shift it around. We don't have to put it in there. I think that's good though. Probably will bring out these figures a bit more. And there's also a building coming up, which I'll just indicate like that. Right in the background, there's some skyscrapers and things as well right down the end which I'm not gonna focus on too much there's even you know some buildings here as well okay so for a brief pencil sketch you're looking at that's about all you need and what I'll be doing actually I'm gonna be using the pigment liners for this one two different types of black pens that I use pigment liners which have a kind of felt tip and they lend to a more scribbly sort of drawing I, I find you can draw fast and it skips the areas of the paper and so I'm actually going to start off with 0 0.3 0 0.3 nib and I'm just going to get straight into it so let's have a look Start say around. Actually, I'm going to start with the figures. Just try to get in some details first. And the reason why is so then you can cut around them with the trees and everything else afterwards. You know, it just makes for easier planning later on. Okay. So there's one. Another one here. both walking away or towards 
camera and you know we've got one person here maybe going through their bag or whatever it is to the side of them okay like that and you know we'll get another figure just around here as well these two might be friends talking to each other That. Let's get in some more of these figures. Smaller ones at the back here. of one just walking over in this direction looks like he's might be running and another one near the front here because the bit of paper that I'm drawing on is quite small you can get away with uh, just a bit of detail like this and it's really up to you how much detail you put in. You don't have to you know, get in all the figures and everything like that if you don't need to, if you don't feel the need to. So let's go ahead and start getting in some of this building in the background. And there is a tree here. So let's get that in. This is where you can actually switch to a smaller nib as well to indicate more details you know you've got this building which is quite complex really but simplifying it down you know we'll add in some windows just like that indications of windows because i don't want this to draw away from the rest of the drawing and you know there's a light here get that in like that there's another light coming up to this side like that okay all right so let's start working uh, around this side you know, there's, like I said, little buildings and things in the background which I'm not going to spend much time on. And these, this sort of shrub, big shrub here, we'll need to get in. And you know, while I can actually, see if I can add a few more figures in this direction. that and just do a point three again let's just scribble in these leaves like that kind of go all the way around to this side and this is where we can start getting in some details so start with the main shapes first i'm going to go with this kind of square shape here window and you know the windows on this side and get the top in like that not feeling around too much and we'll do the same thing here on this side. And there's a few kind of layers going on there. And uh, this area of the roof, like that. 
Um, there's a lot of detail in there, but remember, it's just a sketch. Bit of that roof and get in this one now. Same shape, extending upwards like that. It's almost like a, a water droplet. Okay. I'll swap to the point one to make it a bit easier in some areas. Okay, so window, get another window here, and another window there. And there. Fantastic. And now let's get in to the base of the building. Okay, the patterns I think I'll just leave in later. I want to just get in some of these more difficult parts, you know, mainly placing areas of the main building first. So again, let's get in top of this one and it makes it a lot easier having that pencil sketch there I don't have to keep looking back and figuring out is it too tall is it too short uh, you're roughly in the right on the right track if you do this okay and you know, let's get in some of these windows here so there's a lot of detail on here but just you know look at the main shapes This sort of uh, water droplet shape here. You've got a square beneath it like that. Um, you've got these three semicircle areas here. Then another kind of squarish shape beneath it like that. Window here, and you know the pattern's really interesting. Kind of just. Uh, zigzags like that okay so moving further down now I'm just going to get in some of these windows and this is all I'm doing I'm just coloring them in Go back to it again and more detail at the base. We've got the statue here. Okay. So I'm going to just make some of the areas of the statue a bit smaller. basic sort of sketch there for the statue and uh, now moving into this top area of the cathedral and you know, let's get in some of the detail there and it really gets again quite complicated but we know that it just moves up and goes into this sort of similar kind of uh, water droplet shape up here. So that will do it around and uh, wider around the base. Okay. And moving further down, you know, this is getting quite complex. Uh, we'll add in all these semicircles. So it's kind of three rows of semicircles. So one, and it ends around here. So two, 
and last one. Yeah, three. Right. Kind of go around the side as well like that. And then some uh, bits and pieces there. That. Lots of detail on here. But uh, yeah, try to indicate as much as you can. Alright, moving down, let's do this bit, little door, here, little window, and you know, these areas like that. There, I've got this side of the cathedral as well to remember to do. So, just getting that in. This. And you know, the, the base, the square shape again. And you know, I like to just you know, work on different areas of it if I can. And then we've got a, some darker areas over here. That. I've already indicated some of these semicircles. I don't know where they are. There's three rows of three. Okay. And to the roof and things like that. And one thing I forgot to include is the top of this one. Now these should actually be further up, so I'm just restating that. This, turn this into a rooftop. Another one here. Okay, so let's just get in some windows here. So there were areas of darkness in the background. There. And you know, the main thing is the base of this uh, cathedral, there is a large door, a large entrance. And that's quite obvious. Got to get in the darks there for that. It's kind of has this, this shape to it. So let's color that in like that. And what else have we got? You know, we've got to do this side as well. So that. Just a rectangular shape, square rectangular shape, different layers. A bit of a roof sticking out like on this side. Some windows here. The same zigzag sort of pattern. Some windows. And here you've got this kind of uh, semicircle pattern as well. And it continues up to here. And let's get in this area of the cathedral. That okay. Oops, a little bit wonky still. Let me try to restate that a bit. All right. Um, so look, all the basic details are nearly in here at the moment. Now you've placed. Um, the shapes all pretty much in the correct uh, places where you've estimated more or less um, the areas that um, are fairly accurate. You, know, you can spend all day trying to get it in uh, exactly as it looks like in the reference picture, but 
you know, that's just going to take you a really long time. It's up to you how long you want to spend. Like I always say, um, for me, I just try to be as efficient as possible and enjoy the process rather than constantly, you know, comparing what I'm doing to the reference photo and thinking, oh, is it, is it matching exactly? Is it not? You need to have an element of accuracy and, and realism in here, but anything beyond that point is just a bonus. So the patterns, this is really going to be interesting there. This one kind of comes across and there's these geometric sort of shapes on the roof. I'm not going to get that in. And you've got this one that kind of comes across there, like that. And a second pattern that goes in contrast to it. But you got this one here, which has these sort of radiating areas and this one here this sort of pattern as well okay same for this one you know not spending too much time trying to uh, get all the detail in that in okay great and i'm just going to hatch this Part of the building as well that's darker. Um, look at areas that I might want to hatch a little, maybe in here and you know, anything that you feel needs um, a bit of extra detail. This large shrub. I'm going to hatch that in and this one too. Like that. And to set some little details. And I'll show you what I mean when I'm using one of these pens. Um, lines are just a lot more defined when you touch onto the paper. So if I draw a figure here. It looks tends to look a lot neater than when you go with the pigment liner. So it's up to you. I'll well, use a combination of both. Okay. I think these ones I'll hatch away a bit as well. Tops of these little roofs. And you know, let's look at what else might want to add in here to be honest uh, I think you know for a basic sketch that does the trick already but um, the perfectionist in me is never quite happy <laughs> especially when comparing it to the reference picture There is a trade-off at some point when you have a certain level of detail which looks perfect and when you go beyond that point you find there's just diminishing returns for how much time you spend on drawing. Um, but I always try to keep in mind that for a drawing like this when you want to portray a particular scene, um, you know, whether it be, you know, this scene, or it could be Venice, or it could be, you know, a particular landmark, a known landmark. You want to add just enough detail so that if you, you know, showed it to your friend or, you know, someone 
without the reference picture, they'd be able to say straight away, okay, yeah, I know where that is. That's in, you know, uh, Moscow or it's in St. Petersburg or, I mean, assuming that they have seen it before. Okay, so the scene that I want to portray is basically I want to have a sort of snowy scene. So a lot of this foreground I'm really going to leave in um, just leave it in white basically and with the rest of it I'm going to get in in a very quick manner. So I'm starting off first and um, what I'm going to do is just add in little bits of colour onto the actual cathedral. It's very colourful in person but I don't want to spend too much time trying to apply every bit of detail in it so main thing I want to get in is some of the green on the domes and a bit of the blue as well one of the domes and the rest of it is quite a warm color so we'll get in that one first uh, actually we'll get in all of maybe this one as well that one here like that okay and I think I've missed this one here, which is a kind of green, and then there's purplish pattern running across it. So we'll get the green first, and then later when it's dried, we'll go in with a bit of that purple. Add in a bit of color extra green there okay and for the other one go with a warm warmish sort of blue but light so remember to leave some uh, white areas as well like that that's all you need basically all you need I'll go in and add in some darks later onto it Okay, the dome, I'm going to add a bit of yellow, I think it's turned a bit greenish actually, and uh, move down, let's get some yellow ochre, just a warm colour here, maybe add in a bit of burnt sienna as well to that mix, so that it's not all the same colour, move downwards here, I'm going to pick up that yellow again, and I want to warm it up significantly because uh, I'm altering the color of it quite a lot so that it stands out against the sky when I do it later. So I'll cut around these you know, semi-circular designs. We'll go down, a bit more yellow there. And I'm gonna do the same thing actually for these other ones. More yellow. And actually I will drop in some burnt sienna in a moment but I want to get this sort of feeling of light emphasize that more let's try some orange a bit of orange like that all the way down to about here and I'm going to stop because this is where I'm planning the snow to be. And uh, actually, we'll get in these buildings too. Let's make that lighter. Yeah. And you know, all I can, I'll drop in a bit of burnt sienna and some English red as well. So just some of the areas at the base, change it up a bit as well as this area I feel that it needs to just recede back a bit so that these two front towers can come forward but I'll go in later again with a bit of a blue maybe okay and there's a tree a couple of trees here I'm actually gonna use a sap green Maybe with a bit of this yellow green too. Like that. 
pretty loosely going around those trees and I'm going to cut around the people as well. Um, drop a bit of this blue at the base like that. Same with these other buildings. I think it just needs a bit of anchoring to the ground. And you know, when you have the paint still wet, it's great to do this sort of thing. Okay, like that. And you know, there's actually a building behind here which I'm going to get in with a bit of a warm color, it's, uh, yellow ochre. I've decided. Okay. Other tree here, again, put on some of this sap green. It's a very light green, and if you don't have a sap green, just, just uh, mix up your own kind of light green to go in there. And uh, we'll drop in a bit of yellow into that base as well. And we've got some buildings in the background here. I'm actually going to go in and cool that down. Hopefully that has the effect of letting it recede into the background a bit. Like that. Just a cooler color. Tree can blend into it. And, you know, a bit of this warmer color on the top like that let it do its thing now uh, a bit of blue at the base of this tree here as well just some uh, maybe some branches and quite some branches too like that let's get some sepia that will help Looking good. Now, what we're going to do is uh, I'm actually going to go straight to the sky, but I'll give it a quick dry first. Just picking a flat brush that's going to be small enough. We'll actually start off with this one, and I'm going to mix up a cobalt blue and. I've actually got some other blues left on the palette, but I'm, I'll start off with this cobalt blue first. Just on the top, like that. Oops. Okay. And I'm gonna cut around. And I'll get in this bit first on the top. that now a bit of cutting around here and you can do some shaping as well just with that uh, the top of that part of the cathedral okay moving down and this is where you kind of have to be a lot more careful. I'm going to swap over to a small flat brush now. And let's do some cutting around work like this. Okay. around the domes. Kind of onion shaped. And it's probably this is probably the hardest part because you really have to make sure you leave 
domes as is. Don't want to go over them with the blue, otherwise completely obliterate them. Okay, getting there, getting there. So just adding in some darker blues. Just some left over on the palette actually from the last painting. I think this, just try that out. Looks like some darker clouds up there. And move down, finish off this wash. Here, so it kind of goes around and I've got some street lamps actually here which you can get in a bit of that yellow and I hope that it might blend in with the blue as well uh, well we'll see how it goes so we'll go just do this bit you have to do it very quickly so you can already tell that it's dried off there we go And, um, you know, there's always the option of gouache later. If you do go over some of the areas that are planned to be light. Okay. Let's get this side in. I'm going to just try to feather it off near the end here so that it just blends a bit more into the trees okay it's looking all right to me um, thinking what else I might be able to do maybe just feather some of this into that side just some of these clouds join them on more and play around with them a bit Really, don't mind how that's looking. Okay, so let's go into the foreground now. Now, remember how I said we want to leave this pretty much all white? Um, what we're going to do first is just get in some of these figures, and I'm going to use my round brush because it's quite small. And we're going to put in the legs first, and I'm actually going to go with this cool color on the palette. Just mix up whatever you've got left on the palette. Uh, this has kind of turned into a purplish gray color, so I'm going to just add in some of the legs like this. really not too concerned on what color I'm picking as long as it's just going to contrast with the snow. Usually if you pick a darker color like this it's going to help. Okay there's a couple up the front which I'm going to get in darker too. That. Fantastic. Maybe some here I've forgotten to just add them in. Okay. I think a slight shadow may help. running to the front, just underneath them. Very basic shadow, just to anchor them to the ground a little. Okay, now we can have a bit of fun with the colors. Let's get some green on this guy, you know, and we can get some yellow on this person here, perhaps, and 
Now let's mix in a bit of purple in, in there, there as well. Just have a play around the colours. And, you know, let's pick up a bit of this colour from the palette. What have we got here? I think a lighter colour would work. So some Naples yellow and these figures there. Quite loosely, and you know, I think some darker ones here. I'm gonna swap it around, but normally, if you've got a background that is lighter, you if you add a warmer color or sorry, a darker color to the front, it's just gonna make it pop out better. So, I'm just going to my palette and I'm picking up all kinds of mixes that I have. You know, I really don't know what color I'm using half the time. Now I'm grabbing a bit of orange, for example. So just have some fun with the colors. A bit of yellow, more yellow here. So it looks too much. Let me just dull that down a little. Lift off some of that paint. Okay, a bit of red on this person. And let's go with some blue maybe on this one. Another blue like that. And I'm going to get their heads in a kind of carmine red color. Water that down more actually. Carmine red. Like that. So I'm going to add some indications here of maybe some snow, some mounds of snow uh, in the ground or some lighter bits. And what you do, you just pick up some of this blue that's already on the palette, light blue, and um, that's what you do. Just dry brush it on like that. Just a little bit will do all around the place. That will indicate just some texture here. Okay, but don't overdo it. That's probably enough. Something like that. Okay, and I'm gonna just do the hair of these people now. I'm really gonna just pick up a darker color, uh, sepia. For the hair and uh, yeah just try to get that in you know very quickly use whatever color you'd like You can barely tell once it's dried. And also I want to outline the legs a teeny bit more, just make them stick out more. It's important to have some of these figures darker than the background because uh, it will bring them forward. And I find if you play around with the legs and just make the legs darker, that's one way to kind of anchor them down to the ground more. Like that. You know, you can add some things like straps that might be, uh, a person might have a backpack on, for example, straps there, and this person's got a bag on the side. You know, you can, you can sort of imply this with the pen as well. Don't need to do this all in watercolor. Um, just add some bit of detail on this guy. That. I want to darken his legs as well more in this one like that bring him forward a bit might just add some longer hair to this one to the right uh, let's see 
that. Yep, can work. All right. Looking good. Shadows and things here. Just areas underneath, for example, there. Might have a shadow and um, also I'm going to darken this area a little bit too to help bring out uh, these two towers. So just a bit of cool color in here, maybe in here as well, you know, some final details really. Okay. And almost forgot this bit here is darker, so I need to just mix up a dark a bit of paint for that. This. Okay. Darken some of these doorways as well. Windows. But, uh, don't overdo it. I think that's enough. Okay, and one thing I forgot to do was just get in some of the patterns actually for this, some of the um, domes. Just a bit of purple through that one, like that. And with the others, I'm just gonna go in with this uh, darker green. Yeah. Very simple. That's all we need to do. Just a bit of darkness underneath the domes here. And this building perhaps there. Tree here. Let's try to get some branches in. that okay give this a quick dry gonna try to add in some snow so some white gouache and a toothbrush, believe it or not, and some water. Okay, and just a little bit, I think I'll go for up here, like that, here as well. There we go, a bit of snow. that okay. 
Okay. And that's it. Check out these tutorials down the side here. I've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors.